Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is the 3rd of August and if you've seen my July vlog, which I will leave linked in the description, uh, you will know that I'm currently in Cornwall with my mum and my brother. We're having a really nice kind of family week. Um, it's been a mix of walking on the beach, going for food, they've been off exploring and like went to like St Ives and Land's End and stuff. I, to be honest, didn't feel like doing that much kind of sightseeing stuff because I knew it was going to be really busy and it was also quite a lot of time in the car so I had a day or two days actually where I was just kind of by myself just hanging out reading having a little bit of a mooch about it's been very lovely today oh mum and I also went to see the Barbie film yesterday which was a lot of fun I feel like either my expectations were too high or I missed something because I did enjoy it and it had loads of fantastically like feminist messages like threaded all the way through it but it just didn't give me the emotional punch that I know that some people have had from it but I still very much enjoyed it would definitely recommend it uh, and then today mum and I my brother went off to see a friend of his and mum and I have been to the beach with the dogs we went for a wander around mm, one of the towns I can't remember what it was called very cute and very pretty uh, and then we went to Rick Stein's, one of Rick Stein's pubs for a very nice lunch, seafood lunch. It was excellent. Um, and now I need to kind of get ready to go home because we're going home tomorrow. Um, but before I go and pack all my stuff up and get ready to go home briefly for about two days before Gary and I are off on our holiday, um, I've got a few books to talk to you about. So technically this first one, I finished at like midnight on the 31st of July. So technically it's a July read, but to be honest, I'd already filmed the end of that wrap up. Sorry if you can hear like background noise, obviously mum and Ben are, are around in the house. Um, yeah, so technically I finished this at the very, very last bit of July, but I'd already filmed that wrap up and done like my, my book journal and all of that stuff. So we're just gonna count it as an August read. Uh, and that book is The uh, Very Irregular Society of Witches by Sangu Mandela. I'm gonna put a picture here because I did not bring the dust jacket with me on holiday. Um, so yeah, I'll put a picture up. Um, this was very kindly gifted to me, I think in June by, let's see who it was, where is the gift note? Uh, by the lovely, oh yeah, that was it, Joy from Joy of Books, um, who sent me some more witch lit. So this was fun. Um, I gave it three and a half stars, first of all. I really like the story and the concept and parts of the writing. So we're following a character, following a woman. I can't remember what her name is. Uh, what is, what are they called? Oh, it's because it's in first person. So, oh, Mika, it's not first person, it's third. Mika, we're following Mika, who is a witch. And witches exist and magic exists, but it's a secret within society. Um, so witches kind of hide themselves and they aren't allowed to be together too often because too many witches gathering means that the magic will gather and then it will be more difficult to hide. Uh, so she has grown up with this rule in place and also witches are always orphaned. So their parents always die um, when they're born. <clears throat> um, and yes, she's been living this very solitary life and then she gets this message uh, saying that there's this group of three um children who are witches, three girls that are witches, and they need someone basically to help guide their magic. Um, so she gets this job basically as a nanny and it's about her going to this house and kind of what she finds there. And I'm not gonna say any more about the um, plot because I don't wanna give spoilers, but it very much gave me the same feel as The House on Cerulean Sea. Um, with a little bit of romance, a little bit more romance because there was romance in that. This one is slightly less closed door, slightly. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed bits of it. I, as I was reading it, I thought it was a debut novel. It isn't. And actually that kind of lowered the rating for me even further because I think when it's a debut, debut author, you kind of, there's a bit more leeway than if they're an experienced writer. And this writer has written quite a few things from the look of their Goodreads. Um, I felt like there was a lot of telling rather than showing, which is not a writing style I enjoy. I also felt like there were some pacing issues. Some things were really slow. And then some things would happen way too fast that we'd kind of been building up to it. It'd be like, oh, hang on, I want to go and focus more on that, see more of that. Um, so yeah, three and a half stars. It was cozy. It was a quick read. Um, and I did enjoy elements of it, but I feel like there were also some missed opportunities. Then the next book that I, f I finished and the first book for the Amazing Readathon, which I'm taking part in this month, uh, is Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is very kindly sent to me by Canon Gates in exchange for an honest review. And this comes out on the 10th of August. So by the time you see this video, it will already be out. I saved it for the Readathon because it has this gorgeous blue cover, uh, which is my team color. 
for the readathon and if you read books with your team colour on more than 50% of the cover you get an extra 50 points so I saved it for this. So Elizabeth Acevedo is best known for her YA uh, stories and I've read everything that she's written. I've read um, The Poet X, Clap When You Land and With Fire On High. I think that those are her three um, YA books um, and this is her adult debut. And in this we're following a family, uh, quite an extensive family and luckily for me and I'm assuming this will be in the finished copy as well, at the front of the book they've got a list of who's who basically and how they're related. Uh, so you have this massive extended family um, and we're following um, primarily Floor who decides that she she's someone who can uh, who has dreams or nightmares that predict people's deaths um, and she decides that she's going to have a living wake so she sees this Netflix documentary that her daughter sent her about living wakes and this intrigues her and she decides she's going to have one and then this is following various members of the family in the few days leading up to the living wake and then the wake itself and the aftermath. Um, and it's very much a look at family, at um, being an immigrant in another country, it's about culture, it's about the secrets we keep both from the people around us and from ourselves, it's about identity um, and it's about kind of, um, like the title is, in my, in my head I might be wrong, but it feels like that reference to like the family myths that grow up around certain people and certain events. And yeah, it was really interesting. I gave it four stars. I think, it for me, it didn't have the emotional impact of her YA writing. I think there were a lot of perspectives and I don't think for a lot of them, you, you couldn't always tell who was talking. It starts with the name of the character each, the beginning of each chapter. But I feel like if you were halfway through a chapter and put it down and picked it back up, you might not be able to tell who's talking immediately. So yeah, I enjoyed it. It was definitely interesting. I think a lot of people are going to really love this book. I feel like if you like, it's very literary fiction. Um, and I feel like if you like that kind of like very introverted look at kind of life, you'll like this. Uh, I did definitely enjoy it and would recommend it. I gave it four stars. And yeah, that was my first like full <laughs> finished book for this month. And then my second one, and yes, I know it's the third, but we were reading quick for the readathon, um, was A Spoonful of Murder by J.M. Hall. I picked this up super cheap in the charity shop, I think, last month. Uh, and I gave it three stars. This, for me, is like the uh, a brilliant example of a three-star book in that it was cosy and fun at the time. There's no way I'll remember this, even at the end of the month, I don't think. So we're following three retired primary school teachers uh, whose friend dies and they decide to investigate it basically. So it's very much in the same vein as like the Tuesday Murder Club, Thursday Murder Club, that kind of series. Um, and yeah, for me, it was nowhere near as good as that series. It was kind of, it was funny in some places. There's some very British humour in this. I feel like people outside of the UK probably wouldn't get a lot of the references. Um, I liked some of the kind of reflections on teachers. J.M. Hall is or was a teacher himself. And some of the things, some of the kind of observations about what it's like to be a teacher, why people do it, all that kind of stuff, I really enjoyed. But the plot itself was very ploddy and very slow. And a lot of the time I was like, can we get on with it, please? Um, you've also got the three different perspectives in here of the three different women. And a bit like with the Acevedo book, I just didn't feel like the voices were distinct enough. I mean, it was worth, definitely worse in this than in the Acevedo book. Um, and I think there were a lot of missed opportunities for like going a bit further a bit deeper so yeah it was it was fine oh, i've got a hiccup excuse me it was fine i feel like you'll see this in whole once my mother-in-law's read it and i will probably forget about it it's the start of a series and i don't have any interest in picking up the next one to be perfectly honest which for me is usually a sign of three star book like it wasn't bad it wasn't offensive there was some there was quite a lot of diet culture in here particularly one of the characters which was kind of annoying um but yeah it was three stars. The, the solution to the murder was really obvious from the beginning. And it was, it, to quote Eva, it was a book and I read it. Don't know what else to say. Okay, so I am going to go and get myself sorted out. I need to get packed up because we've got to be out of here at 10 tomorrow. And then I'm going to drive four hours home back to my husband. I've had a really nice week with my mum and my brother, but I am excited to get back to my husband and the cats at my own bed. Uh, but only for two nights three nights uh because we leave again on monday but i'm sure i'll talk to you between now and then um so yeah i'm gonna go get myself sorted out probably run myself a bath and get packing
it's the 7th of August and I've got mad hair because as you saw in the last bit of B-roll, which was this morning, we took the motorbike over to Wales for breakfast this morning. So yes, I have got helmet hair, safety first. Uh, so yeah, apologies for that. Um, so since I spoke to you last, I was in Cornwall when I last sat down and did a clip. Um, obviously I've come home. Uh, Gary and I have had a very quiet weekend. It was the start of his two week holiday for the summer. Uh, so he was obviously really tired. So it's just been a very quiet weekend of like, not a lot, just kind of pottering around. I did a bit of cooking. I did a lot of washing. Obviously didn't show you that bit, but I've done a lot of laundry in the last two days. Um, and then today we are off to Marlborough. Um, so we're gonna be there for the next five days. So till Friday, obviously I will show you that as well while we're there. Um, and thankfully today, the weather seems to have turned a corner back towards sunny. Um, over the last week or so, we have had thunderstorms and hail and rain coming in this way. And it's August and I would really like some sunshine. Um, if you guys have watched like my June uh, wrap up, you'll know I don't like it when it gets too hot in the UK. But I think the caveat for that is I don't like it when it's too hot when I have to work. When I don't have to work, I'm fine with it. Um, and actually so far, I haven't been in the hammock since the start of July, which is sad times. So yes, hopefully the weather's going to pick up a bit this week. Uh, we're going to Marlborough, which is only just over an hour from where we live. Um, and it's been quite funny because obviously people at work and friends and family stuff have been like, oh, where are you going on your holiday? Because there are lots of people we know who are going to like Greece and Italy and Croatia and all of these beautiful places. And we're like, Marlborough. <laughs> They're like, oh. Um, but one, we didn't have loads of money to throw around at holidays and stuff because you know cost of living crisis i keep going on strike all of that good stuff so we don't have loads of money for it and also one thing that he and i have learned is actually we don't like traveling that far so if we can keep it like once we decided we weren't leaving the uk we were like well let's just do like an hour hour and a half max search because all we want to do is be somewhere comfortable and pretty uh be near a town that we can have a little bit of a meet around and be somewhere that's private and quiet and where we're going as you'll see and i'm now very excited to go um is going to hit all three of those so yeah we're going to marlborough for the week just the two of us and it's just gonna be a week of relaxing and reading and eating and sleeping and all of that good stuff so yeah that's what i've been up to um the last few days i have finished three books which is pretty good i'm thoroughly enjoying the amazing readathon uh brie is the absolute master of chaos um also because of the time difference because she's in the states um she does like she's been doing the prompt drops at like midnight her time which is like five in the morning my time so like i go to bed everything's fine and calm and then i wake up to total chaos on the discord so that's been quite entertaining uh but yeah the the books that i have finished so for the prompt because i talked about my book from starting point to new york then new york to mexico city the prompt was to read beautiful books or books with a beautiful cover so i chose uh, pandora's jar women in greek myths in the greek myths by natalie haynes because look how beautiful this cover is it's also blue which got me an extra 50 points i mean it's so pretty um and it's one that i've been wanting to read for a while i picked this one up myself i can't remember when it was at some point over the last little while um i've read a few of nothing haynes other books um the last one being stone blind which i really enjoyed um and this is non-fiction so she takes 10 women from the greek myths uh, and then she tells you their story basically um so yeah i've read thousand ships is the other one of hers i've read um and enjoyed so these this tells you the story of pandora jocasta i'm sorry if any of the pronunciations are slightly off Helen, Medusa, the Amazons, Clymenestra, Eurydice, Phaedra, Medea and Penelope. Um, and I gave us a solid four. What I really like about this is it tells you the ancient Greek myth of each of the women. Um, it also looks at some kind of um, modern interpretations or adaptations so um in the amazons chapter for example it talks a bit about buffy the vampire slayer and i don't, never really made that connection before so i thought that was interesting um and it's all about kind of bringing these women into the forefront into the center of these stories and telling them um but also nothing haynes has got this really great kind of dry sense of humor and every so often she'll crop up in brackets like with just a little aside or making a little comment here or there which i thought was really fun um yeah i feel like I didn't necessarily learn loads of new stuff, but I have read quite a lot of Greek retellings and also nonfiction on Greek myths. So I feel like if you're brand new and you don't know where to start, 
in especially in terms of like feminist retellings of Greek uh, myths, this would be a really good one to start with, even though it's non-fiction. Um, so yeah, I gave that a solid four stars. Really enjoyed it, and obviously it definitely fulfilled the prompt of beautiful cover. Then the next book that I finished was my audiobook, was an audiobook, and as usual, I've got it on my handy piece of paper, which is Anne Boleyn, 500 Years of Lies by Hayley Nolan. Listen to this on Scribed. Um, Hayley no Nolan also narrated uh, the book, which I really enjoyed, and I gave it a solid, again, a solid four out of five stars. I read most of this on my drive back from Cornwall, because, side note, what should have taken three hours took nearly five. What the joy of the English traffic. Um... And this is an autobiography for Anne Boleyn, who was the second wife of Henry VIII. And I feel like it's going to be a real Marmite book. Uh, the reviews on Goodreads are very, very mixed, and I can see why. Um, so Hayley Nolan has a very strong opinion on Anne Boleyn and the way that she's been treated by history and the kind of truth of what she was like and why she was killed and all of that kind of stuff and I found it really interesting I already know a weird amount about Anne Boleyn um I've read a lot of Tudor stuff and I feel like this would be a good book again a bit like with um Pandora's Jar if you're starting out on Tudor stuff or learning about Anne Boleyn I feel like this would be a good one I think what will make it a Marmite book is you'll either like Nolan's voice or or you won't because one of the things I'm I don't think people are necessarily used to in non-fiction is having the writer so present in what they're writing about particularly history books they're usually supposed to be or at least appear to be neutral whereas Nolan has got very very strong opinions on Anne Boleyn um and you'll either like her tone or you won't. I found it entertaining. I couldn't stop listening. Like I said, I listened to most of it on the drive home, but I still had about three hours left. And usually when I'm at home doing chores and stuff, I will have booktube on. Sorry, I've got hiccups. I'll have booktube on, but I had this playing instead because I just couldn't stop listening to it. Um, and there was also a section at the end where she's reading out Anne's final speech that she made on the scaffold as like minutes before she was um, beheaded. And that was really emotional. Um, I wouldn't say I'd learn anything new about Anne Boleyn, her life or her death. I think it helped clarify the order of events and sort of who exactly was pulling the strings along the way. But yeah, it didn't teach me anything. But I did have a good time in reading it. And I, I personally enjoyed Nolan's voice and her kind of way of presenting things. So yeah, for me, that was a four out of five stars. And then uh, this morning I finished my sightseeing book, because once you get to, I arrived in Mexico City with Pandora's Jar. And then once you get to the city, you can sightsee. So the book has to still fit the prompt, but it doesn't cost you anything to get there. So, uh, which the travel books do. Anyway, um, so my sightseeing book was this beautiful. I feel like this more than fits the prompt. I didn't have this with me in Cornwall to start when we got the Mexico City prompt, which is why I went with uh, Pandora's Jar. But I use this for sightseeing. So this is Midsummer Mysteries by Agatha Christie. And uh, can we just enjoy the end pages? And this is very kindly gifted to me last month by their lovely, lovely Lisa um and this is this is I think 12 short stories by Agatha Christie all sort of set in and around the summer um some of these I'd read before um but I still very much enjoyed it uh and it's a mix of Miss Marple, Praro and then some like uh standalone short stories and I just really enjoyed this again I gave this a four out of five this has been a very four star heavy um couple of days so yeah I really enjoyed this I didn't quite get the five star feel um to you know to give any higher than that but it was a solid four star i really enjoyed it it also fit perfectly for the prompt because it's so pretty and it's going to look great on my shelf next to the winter one i've got the winter one which is like mid midwinter murders um and then midsummer mysteries and yeah i'm hoping to collect the spring and autumn ones at some point so those are the books i am going to go and pack my life up again i feel like this this month is just you know not that i'm complaining but it's like unpack wash my stuff repack go come back unpack rinse and repeat so yeah i'm gonna go and pack my stuff up and then the husband and i are gonna go on a little adventure
It's the 10th of August and as you can see from the b-roll we're having just the most wonderful little holiday. Um, I'll leave a link to where we're staying in the description because obviously by the time you see this we will have left ages ago because uh, you guys always ask. Uh, we use Airbnb and you guys, I always get questions about how we find such nice places. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots of scrolling um, and we also make sure that we only stay with hosts that are like five star rated um, because we've never had a bad stay. Touch wood. Um, and yeah, we're just very, and by we, I mean my husband, very careful about where we choose. So yeah, we're in this beautiful place. It doesn't look it right now on the camera, um, but it is actually like blue skies outside and we had a beautiful day yesterday. It was actually really hot. Um, so that was nice, bit of improvement in the weather. Um, but yeah, we're not really doing much of anything, just relaxing, eating. Yesterday we went for a bit of a wander around devices. We're going to go into Marlborough today. Uh, so I'll be going to the white, I think it's the white horse bookshop, which is one of my favorite bookshops anywhere so i'm excited for a little wander around there um yeah and just eating and relaxing and just not having any particular timetable it's lovely uh so yeah we've got the rest of today today's our last full day and then we go home tomorrow morning um which will be sad <laughs> and i'll be sad that our week's holiday um you know our like uh couples week at week holiday is over but we're having a lovely time and then this weekend i have got the 48 hour head-to-head -head um, sprints for the Amazing Readathon, which is so much fun. Uh, I don't know if I've told you this already, so apologies if I'm repeating, but we've gone from our hometowns to New York City, and to get to New York, we had to read a book that was published by one of the five big publishers. I felt like I have already said this. And then we were going from New York City to Mexico City, and we had to do a book uh, with a beautiful cover. Yeah, I think I have told you this, because that's when I was reading the mm, Greek myth non-fiction. Um, and then from New York City, we went to Sao Paulo and we had to read a book with three or more people on the cover because Sao Paulo is one of the most like heavily populated books, books, uh, cities in the world. So this is my book for that, which leads in very nicely to my book review. Um, this is Juno Dawson, All of the Above. This is very kindly sent to me by the lovely Ali um, back in June. And look at this cover, like. I just, yeah. As you guys will know, if you've been watching uh, my videos this year, I have become completely obsessed with Juno Dawson's writing uh, since I read Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I had read a couple of um, Juno's previous books. So I'd read the London trilogy and I'd read Under My Skin and Say Her Name. Um, and having read, and then I hadn't read any for a while, and then having read Her Majesty's Royal Coven, I was like, I want to read everything that Juno Dawson has ever published. And this is one of her backlists. This came out in 2014, and I gave it three stars. I didn't love this. We are following a teenager called Toria. I should have remembered that, given that her name is the same as mine. Uh, who moves to a new town uh, just as she's going into sixth form college. And it's about the people that she meets and it's kind of a coming of age and it's about identity and sexuality. You can probably get a hint oh there's the gift note um you can probably get a hint as to which, which sexuality we're talking about here because of the cover but obviously i don't want to like outright spoil anything um and yeah i gave it three stars i think it was fast paced and it was it was a fun read and i really like Juno dawson's kind of perspective on the world but you can tell this was published in 2014 there are harry potter references throughout um which is of its time uh, and also just some of the things that the character says so at the beginning she she has this thought and she's like oh does that make me autistic or am I acting autistic and she's not on a character with autism and it was just a few bits like that I was just a bit like yeah this is not great there are also some massive content warnings in here for um self-harm suicide ideation uh death eating disorders um, I think that's it. Oh, and alcohol misuse. Um, but I didn't feel like a lot of the topics were handled brilliantly. There is, um, what is supposed to be a really emotional point in this book and it felt so rushed. I didn't really feel anything. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it enough to finish it. I gave it three stars. It's definitely not my favourite of Juno Dawson's writing, but that's fine. Like I said, it's from 2014. You can really see her growth as an author. author. Um, and I'm glad that I got to read this. So thank you, Ali, for sending this to me. I'm glad I got to read it. I can tick that one off the list. Then we went from Sao Paulo to... No, wait. Was that my Mexico one? I'm confusing myself now. Where have we been? So new home base to New York, New York to New Me to Mexico City... Oh yeah, okay, yeah, then we've arrived in Sao Paulo. And then once you arrive places, you can sightsee until the next um, like drop. 
the next you know city has dropped uh, and so i got another book with three or more people on the cover which was the light fantastic by um terry pratchett this was also gifted to me i think this was the lovely victoria yes lovely vicky who is a deputy head teacher at primary school which i think i've said before is just a level of job i can't fathom primary school teachers are superheroes um and this is the second book in the Discworld series so i read the color of magic last month or the month before i think it was month before and kind of enjoyed it i've read several Discworld novels sort of out of order just at random and really enjoyed them and i've decided to kind of go back to the beginning and slowly like slowly i'm not in any rush um read my way through and i, I know people say you can start in lots of different places in the Discworld, but i would rather just read in published order um so this is the light fantastic this is basically the second half of the color of magic somebody commented on a video it might have been the video where i was sent this saying oh that's actually those two books were supposed to be one book and Pratchett split it into two short ones and that makes a lot of sense because we are still following, what is his name, Rincewind, who is our completely inept um, wizard as he's basically trying to save the world, the disc world. Um, I gave this three stars. I enjoyed bits of it. The first line made me smile and absolutely cracked me up so I'll read this to you because I really liked it and I think it's a good example of Pratchett's kind of sarcastic sense of humour because it says the sun rose slowly as if it wasn't sure it was worth all the effort <laughs> and I just really liked that um, but there are also bits of this for me and this is a short book that dragged um, but obviously Pratchett at this point is still like world building and putting things in place and you're getting to know characters. There was some adventure and stuff which I, well, I gave it three stars but I feel like it's not one that I will remember the detail of much in a few months time. However, I'm still happy I got to read it and obviously that's another one ticked off the TBR. So I'm currently working on my London prompt because uh, my team, blue team, unfortunately came in last for Sao Paulo. So we have to read a book that's over 400 pages and fits the actual London prompt, which is to read a retelling. So I'm currently reading a Jane Austen retelling. I literally had to raid, there's a tiny, like tiny, free little library where we're staying. So I had literally nothing that would fit that of my own from my own books. So I had to raid the free little library. So I'm reading a really random, I've never heard of it before, uh, Jane Austen retelling, which I'll tell you about once I've finished it, which is fine. It's ticking along nicely. It's got some interesting things to say. So that's fine. Um, and like I said, today we're off into Marlborough. So I've got my favourite blue dress on because the sun is out. Not that you can tell from the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we're going to go for a little mooch around Marlborough get some nice things to eat, I'm gonna explore the bookshop, probably shouldn't be buying books just before my birthday, but we'll see how that goes. And yeah, we're just gonna enjoy our last full day before we go home to the cats tomorrow. of August and as you've seen from the b-roll we've been home for the last couple of days I think I last spoke to you just before we were going to Marlborough that didn't quite go to plan we did go into Marlborough and I got to go to the lovely uh, White Horse bookshop one of my favorite bookshops um and I bought a book which I'll tell you about in a minute because I've also read it um but when we got there Gary wasn't feeling very well so we ended up coming home he slept most of the day and so obviously I had reading time which was great but I was also worried about him so it was a bit of a weird day in the end um, and then we came home on Friday and then we've had a quiet couple of days. Uh, I've been reading furiously for the amazing readathon and doing live shows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah it's been a good couple of days. It's now Monday again. I'm actually coming in to talk to you about four books I finished since I spoke to you last. A book that I've received from a publisher and then I'm going to close off this vlog um, because... Uh, as I said in my July vlog, I'm really conscious that my vlog is super long and I know lots of you enjoy a long vlog, but I think there are also people who are intimidated by them. Um, and I feel like the second half of this month is going to be really busy. So I feel like I have lots to show you. So I feel like we might end up with a, like an obnoxiously long vlog um, if I don't cut it in half. So uh, lots of things to tell you about. Um, 
first of all let's talk about books that i finished so i read uh, a book that i've left behind at the um airbnb where we were staying because it was part of their little free library and that was i've got it written down here um but i'll put a picture probably here um god mission park by jill hornby um which was my prompt for read a book that's a retelling as part of the readathon um it was a jane austen i thought it was a jane austen retelling when i started reading it i realized that jane austen was actually a character in the book but i still counted it because it had major uh, mansfield park vibes um and we're following uh a main character whose name i now can't remember and i don't have the book to hand uh who whose mother dies um, and she has to go and become um, a governess for a really wealthy family at God Mission Park. Um, and they are part of the Austin family. One of the Austin brothers is the owner of this um, huge house uh, because he married up. He married a very wealthy woman um, and they have this huge park and they've got a whole bunch of kids. And she's there to be governess to um, the oldest daughter, Fanny, who was 13. And I really enjoyed this. I gave it three and a half stars. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it talks a lot about um, kind of social mobility and how it feels to be an outsider um when you are kind of and that kind of idea of being alone when you're around loads of people um i really liked our main character i liked her voice i really liked the inclusion of the austin family particularly jane austin who is a character sort of towards the end of the book um and i really liked there's a lot of feminism in it and yeah it was just a fun lovely kind of thoughtful read it's quite quiet i read it quickly i enjoyed it I, i've given it three and a half because i feel like i probably won't remember it very well probably even by the end of the month but for the read it was perfect for what i needed at the time blue cover as well so i got that bonus and yeah it was a book i read it i enjoyed it three and a half stars then the next book that i read is also the book that i bought whilst we were in marlborough hang on i've got too many books in my lap um and that was this stunning look at this this is girl goddess queen by bia fitzgerald i saw this face out in the bookshop and i was like what is that and picked it up and it was a retelling it's a hades and persephone retelling which i'll tell you about in a second and i was like that's perfect for the prompt it's big it's over 400 pages and i was like that's gonna get me a whole bunch of points for sightseeing this will work really well and it's also, it's so, like, look at this cover. I'm completely obsessed. Also, I haven't, like, worn this off while I was reading, so I always take the dust jacket off. Um, That's just how it's um presented. So you've got this gorgeous dust jacket, pink all the way around with the accents of purple. Then, if you take the dust jacket off, it gets even prettier. I think it's even better looking without the dust jacket, because look at this. So you've got Hades here. And then it wraps around the spine, which I love. And you've got Crete here, which is the island where Persephone is from. Not Crete, sorry, Sicily. And then you've got Mount Olympus up here. And just, can we take a moment if I open the book? It's, oh, it's going to hit me in the face. I mean, look at that. That is stunning. And then we're not quite done. End pages, they're the same at either end. Look at that. And then you also get... An illustration of Hades. I mean, could he look any more brooding? And then at the end, you get an illustration of Persephone as well. So this is probably one of the most beautiful books in my collection. Look at that. So yes, I am absolutely obsessed with the aesthetic. You've also got the pink sprayed edge. It was just, it was a whole vibe. Then I picked up and read it and loved it. <laughs> Gave it four and a half stars, which is a shock because it's a YA romance, fantasy romance. Um, hang on, I'm just trying to get the cover back on. Fantasy romance, which isn't usually my thing. But I really enjoyed this. This is a retelling in that it is the Hades and Persephone story. But in this version, Persephone didn't get, I think, what does it say here? Um, she didn't, oh, it's on the back. Thousands of years ago, the gods told a lie. Persephone wasn't taken to hell. She jumped. There was no way she was going to be quietly married off some smug god. Now she's taking matters into her own hands with plans that will shake Mount Olympus to its very core. So yeah, I really liked this version of it. Persephone in this is very strong-willed. I also really liked Hades because he presents as, you know, the scary god of hell um, at the beginning. But you very quickly, and this is not a spoiler, realise that he's actually very soft and creative. He's quite a cinnamon roll. 
um and he has to he feels like he has to project this image in order to not kind of spark another war with the gods um so i loved how that was handled and persephone is the counterbalance to him she is the one who is um kind of aggressive and has plans that she's going to make happen and she's the one that takes charge basically of hades both the place and the god um and makes things happen and i really enjoyed that there is also a content warning from the author at the beginning of the book which we love to see um, which warns of the following. So it says, this book contains discussions and references to rape culture and sexual assault. There are no graphic scenes of this content. A character navigates war-related trauma and suffers undiagnosed PTSD. A character experiences emotionally manipulative, coercive and abusive parental relationships. There is no physical abuse. References are made to physical harm and injury. There are, are no graphic or explicit scenes of this content. So those are your content warnings. I love it when authors put it at the beginning. I'm like, yeah, I just really enjoyed this. I gave it four and a half stars rather than five. There was a little bit in the middle where I was a bit like, this is dragging a little bit. Can we get on with it? Um, but other than that, I thought it was really well done. Um, it also talks about toxic masculinity really well and consent. And I really liked all of that. And I just liked the way the relationship developed between the characters. So yeah, I would definitely read more from her. She's got another book coming out next year. Um, which so far is untitled. So I don't know if it's carrying on from this story because it could. The way it's left, it could also be a standalone. Um, or if it's another Greek retelling or something totally different. But I will definitely look out for more from the author because I really enjoyed that. So that was that one. And then we got into the face-off weekend. So God, Girl, Goddess, Queen was my sightseeing book for London, which was the retelling. And then for face-off weekend, I think I already said Brie gave us a spinner wheel with some European flags on it. You had to spin the wheel and you had to read books with those colours on it. So my first spin, I got Bulgaria, which is uh, white, green and red. And I read, read Our Wives Under the Sea. This is coming up a little bit pinker on camera, but this is red. You've got the white for the text and then the green of the background. So that worked. Um, I picked this up a while ago because um, I'd seen a few people talk about it and enjoy it. This is a weird one and I think it was when I heard people say it was a weird book I was like I want to read it. It's also very short so it was good for the face off weekend. Um, we are following two characters Miri and Leah. So Leah uh, has gone is a deep sea like biologist or something. Sorry it suddenly started chucking it down so apologies if you can hear that. Um, She's gone on this deep sea mission, should have taken three weeks, she was gone six months. Um, and obviously Mary, her wife, was left behind. And you're then following these two characters. So we're following Mary's perspective after the dive because um, Leah has come back different. Um, and so she is dealing with the various symptoms, things that Leah is dealing with. And she's also telling us the story of how they met. So that's her perspective. And then Leah's perspective is during the dive and what happened. I enjoyed this. I think I gave it four stars. What did I give it? Yeah, four stars. I really liked how tense and creepy it was. I really loved the kind of heartache at the centre of it. This is a really sad book. Um, it feels like Miri is grieving someone who's actually not dead. Um, and it feels like a metaphor for kind of dementia or PTSD or mental illness like those things where a person is kind of taken away from themselves um so I really loved all of that uh, I loved how claustrophobic Leah's sections are if you're scared of the ocean maybe skip this one um so I really enjoyed all of that I only gave it four stars because I like to know stuff and we get some information from the end of this book but it's not all wrapped up neatly um, and I wanted a bit more um, and also I didn't have the emotional response that I was expecting to given how um, emotional parts of this book are by the end I didn't really feel anything um, which is obviously more on me but I gave it four stars I did still really enjoy it it fit, it fit perfectly for this prompt and yes I have read it would recommend and then I, ro I rolled rolled I spun and got Romania which is blue yellow and red so I finally picked up Mr Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo so we've got what colours did I say so we've got the blue and then the red and the yellow on the hat so that worked really well um this was gifted to me last October <laughs> October half term by the lovely Laura who said happy half term hope you enjoy a well deserved rest I'm sorry it took me so long to read really enjoyed this again gave it four stars so we are following what is his name Barry Barrington Barrington Jebediah Walker um so he's from Antigua he's in his 70s yeah 74 years old he's been married like his whole life 
uh, to a woman, but he's also, since he was a teenager, been in love with his male best friend, Morris, and they have been carrying on an affair behind everybody's backs. Um, and we follow him, I think it's over about a week, where he decides that he is going to leave his wife and come out and tell everyone that he's in love with Morris. Um, I really enjoyed this, like I said, I gave it four stars. Barry is such an annoying character, he makes really horrible decisions, and a lot of the time I wanted to reach into the book and shake him, but at the same time, you're completely on his side and cheering him on and you want to hug him. Um, so I found this really interesting. We all do also get his wife, is it Carmel? Yeah, his wife Carmel's perspective in some chapters. And I just felt like it was a really interesting look at the culture of Antigua, the idea of marriage. Um, it was obviously in this, there's a lot of um, kind of uh, people being, uh, you know, homophobic um, and racist and all of that kind of stuff. Barry also has some homophobic and racist views which kind of seep out every so often um so it's a tricky book but i really liked it i flew through it really quickly i read this all yesterday um and yeah it just has as ever <coughs> with Bernie and Everest books i just know i'm gonna be thinking about this and her characters for a long time afterwards she's such a character writer and i'm not usually a kind of character focused reader I prefer a plot um, but there is enough plot in this to kind of keep you going and yeah I just enjoyed meeting these characters and the ins and outs of their lives and the things that they were dealing with and the choices they were making and sometimes I wanted to cheer them and sometimes I wanted to slap them and it was just a good time so yeah I gave it four stars thank you so much Laura for sending that to me I think I'm up to date with Bernadine Everisto books now but I need to check my goodreads and see so those are the books the four books that I have finished um, and then I also came home to an ARC from Book Break, who have sent this obviously to me in exchange for an honest review, and that is Sea Change by Gina Chung. This is already out, this came out on the 10th of August, so as you're watching this, this is already out, but can we just enjoy, I don't know what the actual cover will look like, there's no picture of it on this book, I don't think. No, but this this cover for an ARC is beautiful, it's also like bumpy, it's textured, it's, it's really cool. Um, I remember nothing <laughs> about this book, I don't remember requesting it, I must have done. Uh, but it just says, the love of her life is in outer space and she's all at sea. Ro is heartbroken. Her longtime boyfriend has accepted a one-way ticket on a mission to colonise Mars. Her best friend is too busy to notice. Her only consolation is Dolores, the magnificent giant Pacific octopus her father brought to Ro's aquarium before he disappeared 15 years ago. When the aquarium announces that Dolores is to be sold, Ro self-destructs. Can Dolores help her through the storm? So I think this feels, seems really interesting. I think having read Our Wives Under the Sea need a bit of a break from sea stuff uh so i may or may not read this this month um if i don't read it this month i'll definitely read it in september but thank you to book break for sending that to me it's a really interesting one so we are off to wales this morning gary's gone to pick charlie up from his mum uh we're also taking charlie's best friend for the week which will be fun and interesting i'm sure um so we're off to do that today we're traveling today so i need to go and like finish packing and stuff but i just thought whilst the house was quiet i would film this clip um, and get you updated. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we are going to, I'm going to finish off this vlog here. So at the moment I have read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 books in August, which is wild because it's only the 14th. So I'm intrigued to see how, where I can get to, um, by the end of the month in terms of the moment, obviously I'm not going to do full stats at the moment. My most disappointing book I would say is all of the above by Juno Dawson because I really thought it was going to be a high rated book. I know it's one of her backlist and that's sometimes the danger of reading author's backlist. But yeah, at the moment, that's my most disappointing book. And in a strange twist of events that none of us saw coming, my favourite book of the month currently is a YA fantasy retelling. <laughs> I just really enjoyed this and I keep thinking about it, even though it's been a few days since I read it. So that's my current favourite read. But obviously it's all to play for. We will see where we get up to. In terms of the amazing readathon, I'm also really enjoying that. Currently... Blue are in first place. We won the London leg, which is amazing because we have been last. So that's really exciting. Obviously, also that can change as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave this here. If you got to this point in the video, if you can leave me a crown emoji for this absolutely stunning cover. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, so yeah, so leave me a crown emoji if you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much if you did. Please subscribe if you'd like more of this chaos and I will see you in the next one. Thanks everyone. Bye.